Have you ever wanted to be on a game show? I'm sure you have. Maybe you were a kid homesick one day, and back in the day we would watch The Price is Right when it would come on TV. We kind of became an expert at it after a while. When you look back, a lot of them were just lighthearted and fun. You could win a few bucks or anything like that, but what about a game show where you have to fight off slasher villains? So I am new to the label Terror Vision. They are a label that I'm excited to get into. I got an order online I bought a couple weeks ago, and I also just went to Texas Frightmare and picked up Nailgun Massacre and a few other titles like Slashers. Now, Slashers is something that people were telling me, hey, I know you're getting into Terror Vision. You have to go grab Slashers. That is the movie you need to see. So I took your guys' advice, and I picked up Slashers. And, and within the first five seconds, meaning putting on the menu screen, which you may see behind me, I was like, what the hell am I getting myself into? I also want to note, just before anything else, this slipcover haunts my dreams. First of all, what the hell is that? Second of all, what is that? And third of all, what the f is that? Those white eyes keep me up at night. Something about the eyes on a person, if they look like that, I will just crumble. I will fall and crumble. So kudos to the cool artwork on this right away. I got to say that is pretty freaking haunting. So starting the movie Slashers, I decided I'm not going to watch a drop of special features before I get into it. I don't know about you guys, but a lot of times I like to just watch stuff before seeing any kind of information about it. I don't want to learn about it. I want to read about it. I want to go in blind, as they say. This falls into that category of those movies like 31 or even something like The Hunger Games, except on a much more smaller horror style budget. It's a game show from Japan. The movie starts out with this glamorous set. There's cheerleaders. There's this really cute bubbly host. This is their first time broadcasting to an American audience, having American contestants on the show. Apparently the show is very successful. What is the show, you might ask? Well, the show is called Slashers, and the name of the game is a handful of people enter this dungeon, basically, and they have to escape the Slashers. The last man standing wins. They get bonus points if they can kill one of the Slashers. But what was really interesting about this, and not something you saw necessarily in like a movie like 31, for instance, the Slashers are kind of fan favorites with the audience, so much so that, that before the game starts, Slashers actually come out to the crowd and wave to the audience. And the three characters are really unique and cool. So the first character we have is the Preacher. Now this is the one with the white eyes, and this sucker freaks me out. He has this kind of southern drawl to his talking, but he's got this really great makeup on and those white eyes. He is really the most horror-esque type of character in terms of just the look, the style. He has that old horror vibe to him, and he's a great character. The character isn't necessarily as scary as the image itself, but when you see him in the dungeon and he's kind of behind one of the windows looking through, and all you see are those white eyes, it, it does kind of creep you out, at least creep me out pretty big. Then we have Chainsaw Charlie, and no, I'm not talking about Terry Funk from 1998 when he went back to WWF. This Chainsaw Charlie. Now, Chainsaw Charlie is, you named it, a redneck that wields a chainsaw that is going after these contestants, and he as well has some sort of a southern drawl to him. This guy right here, the creepy looking one, I thought that was some kind of big baby thing. What the head is, actually, is an evil doctor. Now, the evil doctor is the smartest out of the three, I feel, and knows exactly what he's doing. He doesn't exactly try to kill some of the contestants right away. He knows what some of the rules are that are set for him and how to make the television show more entertaining. One of the examples of that is one of the girls in the group is really the damsel in distress. She's got the sad backstory. She's trying to be somebody, but she's not happy, and she figures, what the hell, I'm just going to do this thing to prove a point. And the doctor gets a hold of her, right away. But instead of killing her, he cuts off her shirt. He wants her to show her boobs to the audience. The audience is wanting to see this, and so he doesn't kill her right away. He's cunning. He knows what he's doing, and he kind of stalks this girl in different scenes. Out of the three, I think my favorite is the preacher. Just the look of him is great. If I saw that character at a haunted house, I would be like, oh my god, get away from me. Now, Slashers works because it does not take itself too seriously. This is a modestly budgeted film, and now that I've seen some of the special features, I know that the director that made this was going to have a little bit of a bigger budget somewhere north of a million dollars but it ended up becoming 250,000 Canadian which ain't much it looks like they rented out some sort of a warehouse and put up some walls and made certain rooms and one of my favorite rooms in this house now the horror fans will love this there's a room in the house where they have these statues against this 
brick wall, and some of them are slasher icons that we would see. One of them on the wall is Jason Voorhees, but it's not until we get down that corridor just a little bit where one of the characters goes down that we see they have a Freddy Krueger statue on the wall. That made me pop. I popped for the Freddy Krueger, and it looked really cool. So it's very charming. The set design is really where half of the magic is with this movie. It's like a 31 without the super vulgarity, but also it's very cheesy, campy, and doesn't take itself seriously. The people that don't like Rob Zombie films probably be more akin to liking slashers a little bit more. It just knows what it is. The director that made this, I did watch the interview, and he seems like the kind of guy that knows who his audience is and knows how to deliver what his audience wants. And I had an absolute blast watching it. It doesn't try to be overly smart. It does have some little cool twists and turns, but it knows what its audience is after. It's wanting to be entertained, funny scenes, great kills, some great crazy gore, and they don't hold off on the gore. Some of the gore is wild. Bodies get split in half, heads get chopped right off. It is a bloody mess in this movie, and that made it really fun. I definitely recommend this movie, but it is a big WTF, especially if you're looking for something different. To watch a movie about a Japanese game show where they have slasher villains try to kill people, and whoever wins is the one that gets to live and make money, and the others just, you're dead. It's a crazy synopsis. It's not something that we haven't seen before, but to throw it into a Japanese game show, I gotta give credit, that's an interesting twist. So let's talk a little bit about this release. This is from Terror Vision, and if I had to guess, now I'm getting new into the category of Terror Vision, but based off of the people that have talked to me that are big customers of Terror Vision and have certain titles for them, it seems like one of the premier titles may be something like a Demon Win, which is a legendary title from Vinegar Syndrome that people just love, and you see it in almost every collection of people that have Vinegar Syndrome stuff. I think Slashers is going to be one of those big titles from Terror Vision, where if you're going to get into their catalog, this seems to be the one that people are like, oh, you're going to get into Terror Vision, you have to get Slashers. This is a great title from them. And the people that recommended it to me, you were right. I absolutely loved Slashers. It was super fun. This release is gorgeous, guys. Uh, it's got the same style slipcover that you would see from a Vinegar Syndrome. Damn near bulletproof. This thing is very, very thick. And the back art, that's where the magic's really at. Look at that. And you get to see that in the movie, and it is brutal. Now, here's the slipcover art, which is just as wild and crazy. Japan's number one reality show is coming to America. Now, it comes with a ton of special features. Let's look at the back and talk about it, and then I'll tell you guys what some of the best ones were. So, we've got a commentary with Maurice Devereux. We've got Playing With Your Nerves, The Making Of, Interview with Maurice Devereux, Interview with Neil Napier, Interview with Chris Piggins, Interview with Mapel. Palamio, interview with Carolina Pla, interview with Chainsaw Charlie, additional Japanese scenes, deleted scenes from the work print, PMS Survival Guide, Still Gallery, original trailer, teaser trailer, promo with Chainsaw Charlie, promo with Dr. Ripper, Slasher cigarette ads, Slashers at Fantasia Film Festival, Slashers website, Still Gallery, and newly created subtitles for both versions. So they spared no expense on this release, and they also have an extended version of the film, which is 20 minutes more than what the regular release is. I use the word theatrical loosely, but basically what I say by that is like the official release. The official release was 99 minutes, I think, and then the extended one is like 120 minutes. I watch the standard release, the 99 minute release, but they do have an extended version of this movie that I'm interested in checking out soon. But the interview with the director and the creator was great. All the interviews were fun. Everybody seemed happy to talk about this movie, and the making of was great. When you get something like this from a company like Terrorvision to see no expense spared, love and care put into the special features. So if you're a fan of special features, this release takes care of you you every day twice on Sunday. It will take you a while to watch all of it, and there's just a lot of love put into this. So, getting into Terror Vision, guys, I gotta say, this is a title I can highly recommend picking up Slashers. It's from the early 2000s, I think. I think that was the vibe it had. It definitely took place some years ago, but here's another thing that I forgot to mention. I just think about this now. I was surprised at how good the Blu-ray looked. Um, this movie actually looked really good, which is somewhat surprising because I was like okay this is going to be a game show type thing maybe it's going to look kind of crappy but no it looked widescreen it definitely was not a 4-3 thing it was widescreen took up my whole tv the picture quality was crisp clear and surprising so and the colors popped movies like this can show you that you know a good blu-ray transfer on good equipment is good enough and 
I don't need a 4K of Slashers, but this release right here satisfies me to the 10th degree. So this is a title that's definitely for the cult horror fans and something I can highly recommend. Slashers is a hell of a title for me to start with with Terror Vision. So check it out, guys. I guarantee you this is not going to be something you see every day. Huge giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind the scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.